Hey, Lance. Obviously, it's been a minute since we see you saw each other at last. But uh, <laughs> um, obviously, you have a couple days coming up before the Spring Showcase. What are you kind of looking for from your team this last week? You know, really sustaining a, a mental edge and, and concentration, continue to, to battle through the physical part of practice. Um, for the duration of practice, I think that's something we've, we've started to stress of being able to do that. I don't know if we've done that all the time. And I, I, I thought uh, defensively, I thought we took a, a nice step today in that and probably weren't as crisp as we have been sometimes offensively. Some of that can be heat related. Some of that can be wind related. But we got to be able to learn to play through that better on, in, in all facets. But all in all, I, I, I like the way we're working. and. And we got to finish these last two in the right way. And, and that's one thing we're trying to change. And that's partially why it's not a full spring game, per se, of, of doing things. Because I think every day is important for us to try to get better and, and utilize that time. And just kind of the injury update wise, is there anything uh, that's kind of updated? Um, not really that I can think of that's worth sharing at the moment. I mean, there's going to be guys that are that have been out, will stay out. Um, you know, we've got quite a few that are limited. And the guys that have been, you're seeing not going through, like Patrick Joyner has been practicing again and trying to get him healthy. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll know maybe a little bit more as we get closer. Um, if we can get... Because how we're breaking up practice, we can get some guys a little bit of work in practice. And then, you know, we put them in a limited category and try to get something. Okay. You, you said the other day that, that maybe this week would be a better time to kind of talk about this. So I'll ask you. But what what, what do you want coming was, out of the back well, end of that? That was just to get you off the question last week. Oh, OK. <laughs> so well, then we'll ask, I'll ask you a different one. Who's starting that quarterback? No, I'm Thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, what, what do you what do you want to do and see and, and kind of promote coming out of Friday and and heading into the the real off season and and kind of uh, the rest promote, of the summer? Uh, you know, internally, it, it, again, that we're going to be uh, it, you know a lot of things are going to be competitive for us to be a, a good football team. That we're going to have competition at positions and depth. I, I think we're establishing that in some spots. I think we're limited in some others based on, you know, able bodies at times. Um, you know, I, I, I do think when, when it all comes together in August and as we progress through camp and, and things stay the course, that, uh, that experience and, and of our newcomers that are going to be able to help us will be in a better flow. And, and I think they've done a nice job this spring. And that uh, the consistency of of depth will continue to to grow in this program, so there's not drop off, and we're able to play a lot of people, and uh, and and like I say, be able to play four quarters worth of football. Sure. Will you uh, internally again? Will, mm -hmm. will you come out of spring with a two deep or three deep, or does that mm. is that important at this point? Or never totally has been because okay. it, it's more as we break camp anyway, and, and you know as we go through, you know like. Kenny and Marvin are two good examples, and Mike Nowitzki, you know, guys that haven't really practiced, what does that really do? We know they've played a lot of football. I think what it's really done uh, on the offensive side, um, again, is when we talked about it last time, is where the mixing and matching parts of the offensive line, okay? Andy's got, and Jim have got a real good, and, and, and Terry, uh, out of receivers, is you know, the mixing, mixing and matching of personnels and dual training guys for different spots. Receivers learning, you know, sometimes guys are only maybe playing one or two of the spots. We're trying to get guys playing multiple spots again so we can keep using different people. I think we've done um, a, a really good job in taking steps forward with that, and we'll progress through that with camp as well. Yeah, and we've talked to you throughout the year, it seems like now, about sort of the roster construction and management and all that stuff and how it's 12 months a year now yeah does that continue in the next couple of months i mean obviously the portal's still a thing and 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 yeah. how, how big of a factor do you think that'll be for for you and your staff in the next whatever five we'll six see. weeks i mean we're at our limit uh scholarship wise so again um you know uh, we don't know where that'll head as it's a you know the next portal window is is, is approaching um so uh I mean, we'll have our post-spring ball kind of season 
exit meeting, so to speak, of reviews of everything of, of what they're doing and what they need to improve on and kind of where, you know, you mentioned about a too deep. Well, I don't know if we get that specific, but we talk a little bit about foreseeable um, role and, and where we're going. Excuse my eye, guys. I apologize. Um, you know, so that, that could play a part, but, you know, again, you, you never know these days where, where it trends, but, uh, you know, if the focus is, again, is getting our roster the best it can be, and, and, and the goal is that that's with the guys that are in the locker room right now. Yeah, is that with every – do you meet with every player after spring too? Every, yeah. every player. Okay. We do. I, I really like the way we do it. Uh, position coach meets with them, but then, when, you know, I used to meet with them individually, but now – I meet with them with Coach Gildersleeve and position coach in the room, as well as academics, player development, um, nutrition, if needed. We every everything that they we talk about our checks and and everything that we go through in our program. Everybody's in the room, so everybody hears the same stuff, and everybody hears how um, the individual is progressing, and uh, they have a chance to comment and and again and and where it's at. And so I, I think we leave those meetings. Uh, um, on the same page. Now, over 100 players, um, those are usually 20-minute meetings, so that's a, it, it's a long week next week, but uh, one I really look forward to, and I think it's really been beneficial. We've been doing this for about four or five years now at least, and, uh, and we've added to it since we've been here with some of these other positions that we have, and, it, and it, uh, you, you can see common themes, common themes of of um, progress being made and where a person's moving along. And then you can see when, when somebody's been struggling um, in some areas that there's usually some connections in some other areas as well. And we can sometimes we can point those out and ha head those off and, and get them in a good position to have a great summer. Thank you. Yep. You said four to five years. What were you doing before then? You mean with those meetings? Yeah. The strength coach usually would have his meeting by himself. The position coach would have we, – we have evaluation forms that we've been using for a long time. And, and then I'd get those, and then I would meet with them and kind of go over some of that. But what I found sometimes is that what the position coach was kind of saying happened in the meeting, and sometimes there isn't always aligned again. So, I, you know, and uh, we got this from a previous strength coach that had worked at Stanford. They talked a little bit. We, we put our own spin on it. But I tell you, it's 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 hard to it's it's hard not to be on the same page when everybody's hearing the same stuff. And uh, so, cause sometimes I'd have a meeting and good, better, and different. The the I'd say something and then it wasn't quite the same the way it was said in the one the other one on one meeting. So then I'd have to make another meeting to come back and get on the same. So that's kind of the you know we talk a lot about alignment and a lot of those things kind of stem from that that if as much as that as we can cut out we don't we don't waste time backtracking and and that's why it's been good now, like I say coach Gildersleeve is doing is the only one that's kind of with me on all those and it and uh, we have our academic staff in on some on certain ones depending and it's not just people that um guys that might be struggling it might be something on a graduation plan it may be something and gra it, it could be a lot of different things they're told on certain ones they need to be in the room so it, it's really good and I found out for our staff um, you know Stacy and nutrition and and sometimes uh, Ashley Goodman our player development and, and our academic staff when you bring them in on that part it, it, it really helps the cohesion and they feel their input and their value as well and we appreciate all their efforts because they've been a big part of this as well how do you evaluate how Devin Neal's done how Devin Neal's doing yeah. I mean, he's, he's Devin Neal he keeps doing it each and every day what he's doing I think Devin's at a point now you know he's played two years in this conference and and and, and he's smart about making sure you know he hasn't you know, he's not always, it hasn't always been as healthy, you know. And last year he was trying to do these practices and then still and run over and, and do baseball. And, and I, I think his maturity and understanding and, and, and um, I think he's got a good feel what he has to do. We have to be really, really cautious on how much we put on him because Daniel isn't practicing. Sevian has been practicing all the time. Dylan missed a couple practices. 
um, and there's others in there. So it's been a, uh, it's, he's probably even had more work than we actually had planned. And uh, so I know, I know when it hits August and, and September, he'll be ready to roll. Have you noticed anything different from him now that he isn't doing baseball also? Is he the same guy? He's the same guy. You know, he's, you know, again, I, I just feel, again, his just natural maturity and all of a sudden finding himself being one of the, the veterans as opposed to a year ago. You know, a year ago, he's kind of bursting on the scene. He's trying to do both. He's trying to live both dreams. I think, again, the part of the maturity factor is understanding that, um, that was going to be very difficult, very difficult when both programs are essentially year-round programs, and and uh, it was what it was doing to him, and and uh, so that part in and of itself, I think he's helping our, our you know our other guys out when he's not taking reps. I think when our freshmen get here and things, he'll be another great leader, um, and he's definitely one of the leaders of this football team. Lance, I know you bought some pass rushers in too you know, Phil Lonnie's role. Yeah. But Hayden Hatcher's been in the program. I just want to know what you've seen from him this spring. Yeah, we're pretty incomplete in the evaluation of our defensive ends based on health right now. So that's that, that's going to be a, a big question. Uh, I think an unanswered question maybe um, heading into fall camp. But, uh, yeah, you know, Hayden, Hayden gives you everything he's got and then some, you know. And, uh, um, you know, he's one of those that, um, scraps and fights, and he's doing. In fact, he's walking off today, telling me that you know, he, he, you know, he thought he played the run better today. He wasn't talking about what he was creating in the backfield, but uh, um, yeah, he's done a nice job, and, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need him to play a big role for us. And, and that was one thing he and I talked about after the bowl game. He came in to see me about, you know, uh, you know, his opportunities and play snaps, and you know, it's a rotating position in our program. Keeping guys fresh, but uh, you know he's looking for hopefully in, you know more snaps than last year, and 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 you know rotate with Lonnie, of course, and you know sometimes Lonnie was you know didn't want to come out of the game, you know, and and, and you know and, and you value that, but um, I know I know Hayden's going to help this football team. I know through the spring, when you look at the practices, there's, there's been at least one or multiple recruits at every practice. It seems like. Have you been pretty pleased with the traffic you've yeah, seen? Through? Absolutely, very good traffic. I, you know, you know, it's a credit to our staff, especially our recruiting staff, and that. But um, you know, I'd like to say, you know, some of the things that are happening in this program, on the field and off, has has helped us with that. But uh, um, you know, being only our second spring and you know, getting a little bit better footing on the situation I think has helped us as well. And uh, yes, we've had a very steady diet of people in here um, almost every day. And uh, that that's the new norm in, in this thing as well. But uh, that's good and looking forward to more coming uh, Friday. Coach Warner, if you could just speak to the confidence of your guys compared to maybe a year ago. A year ago, you guys were confident in saying that you believe you can win games, and now you, you've won some games. How, mm. how much more confident do you feel like your group is? Yeah, I think they are extremely because, you know, having some of those wins and playing games close and, and to the wire and the overtime, all those things have helped us confidence-wise in and, and, and so many different ways. I can remember early in the season, you know, talking about, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're past the hoping to win stage in this, in this program. We're, we're not going to. We, we can't can't be that type of program. We've got to be able to move past that. And I think we have. Um, but uh, of course, with that, it, it raises expectations. And that's trying to what what also has kind of been an underlying theme of, of this spring is, you know, you you know, people are people are going to expect more from you. Um, people are going to take you maybe a little more seriously in, 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 in the matchup. Um, but so all those things kind of you gotta you gotta make sure you, you you're keeping your um, your edge so to speak and and what we're doing and I I think I think you have and again between the the flow of the change of rosters that naturally ha happen and you're you're always able to kind of keep moving and and doing that so I haven't I haven't done it out to ask our communication staff is it'll be interesting to count. The number of guys on the roster versus 2021, even where where those numbers would be at, and how much turnover that's been in under 24 months. But I, I think we've got a good attitude, and and we're embracing all challenges. You used the 
word bracing. That was my next question. With a guy specifically like Jalen, how much does he embrace just the ownership that you've given him or even asked him to take in the program? And uh, I know he was saying he got to help you, like, pick out the gear last year with the bowl game, stuff like that. How much does he just embrace that role? <laughs> yeah. You know, he thrives on it. Uh, you know, I think he's, he's – you know, his personality is, is uh, I think, special because I think as much as there is and everything that keeps coming, I think he's very well grounded. But yet he understands that uh, a lot of this is, is you really is evaluated off of him and, 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 and that position. And I think when you play that position, you understand that. Um, but, yeah, all those things that want to try to, uh, again, as we, as we kind of end our second spring, is that, uh, you know, and that seems so weird in, in, in that it seems like we've been here longer than that. But at the same time, I have to kind of remind myself and that some of our players are, are still pretty young and, and young to this routine. And uh, but he is definitely going to be at the forefront of a lot of things that, that we do in this program. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it.